Water is one of the most important natural resources we have on Earth. Understanding the key concepts involving water is so essential that they were included in the Victorian curriculum and separated into various contents. Year 7 students should learn how to use science and technology to solve problems in the modern world, use scientific knowledge, and communicate their findings. This video will encourage you to develop these skills while exploring the importance of water as a renewable resource and going through the separation of mixtures that happens during water treatment. To learn more about water quality, we must understand what makes it so important to us. Well, let's start with the fact that most of our own bodies are made of it. 65-70% to 70 of us is pure water. Keeping ourselves hydrated is critical to our health, and for that we need around 2-3 to three liters or 10 cups of water a day. But if water is so vital to us, how do we know that the water that comes from our tap is good to drink? Do you even know where that water comes from? If you live in Melbourne, you should know that the main catchments for residential use originate from the northeast of the city. Most of them are protected, being located in national and state parks to ensure that the water will not be contaminated by human activity. However, it still has to be treated and tested before it's made available to Melbourne residents. That's because even water that comes directly from natural lakes and rivers are full of sediments and other particles that might make it turbid. Sediments are normally rests of plants, animals and soil that can be found on the bottom of bodies of water. Smaller particles can also be dispersed in liquid, making it look cloudy and not clear. When that happens, we say the water is turbid. Because of all the particles dispersed in natural water, we call it a solution. Some of these particles, like some minerals, are actually good for us, and therefore there is no need to separate them. However, bigger particles, like sediments, must be separated from the mixture before arriving at our houses. Filtration is one of the main techniques used by Melbourne Water to retain sediments and big particles in the filter, resulting in a non-turbid, clear water. To kill all of the microbes and bacteria that might be found in the water, Chlorine is added in a proportion that is just enough to do its job without leaving a bad taste to the water. Finally, the water is tested to determine how acidic it is. To do that, scientists use a scale called pH. pH varies from 0 to 14, where 0 is extremely acidic and 14 extremely alkaline or basic. To give you a reference, lime juice often has a pH of 2, while bleach has a pH of 11. Completely neutral water should be exactly in the middle of the scale, having the pH of 7. However, since mineral water is actually a solution, its pH can vary a lot and should ideally be kept between 6.5 and 8.5 in pH value. Because of its good water treatment and protected catchment areas, Melbourne is considered to have one of the highest quality water in the world. That means you can enjoy your tap water and trust it for drinking and cooking. Unfortunately, though, not everybody in Australia can say the same. Elsewhere in Australia, there are people who don't even have access to clean water. That goes beyond customer satisfaction and becomes a matter of health for these communities. In 2015, Australia committed to follow the goal of providing safe, clean water to every person in the world by 2030. This goal is number six in the United Nations agenda, to which Australia is a member. Despite the focus on clean water issues in other countries, there is still much to do about it within Australian borders. Remote Aboriginal communities are the ones to often suffer from the lack of clean water, resulting in serious health issues for this population, including the spread of infectious diseases. How could we provide all communities in Australia the deserved access to clean water? What are the challenges involved in providing this water to remote communities? And what can we do, as residents in this country, to contribute with water preservation to guarantee that we will all have access to clean water in the future? Research about the challenges of clean water and discuss it with your peers, coming up with solutions for this global issue.